It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. These are the final seconds. The lead in the fourth. Can they hold on to it? That do or die time. And everything rides on one shot. But it isn't going to be that easy. This is down to the wire. One shot to take you to the top. One winner. This is clutch basketball. That's the NBA playoffs. That's game. Hey, what's going on, Clipper people? It is me, William, the Opinion Update. And I am Positive Chuck Mockler. And we're your friendly neighborhood Clippers podcast. Oh, yeah. Just a couple of best friends and Clipper credentialed media folks. It's a good time. Bring you Locked On Clips five days a week. 7 a.m. is when they come out. You don't have to wake up that early to listen to them, but it might help. I don't know. How would it? What's it going to help? Hype you up. It will help. You know what? It will help hype you up. Anyways, to hype you up, we got a heck of a show lined up for you today. We're going to kick things off with a just a glorious recap. Oh, of that what a one, night. Of that 133 to 116 win over the Blazers. Mm-hmm. Um, really got to like in this one wire to wire victory. Paul George stole the show. Paul George stole the show. Got maybe a little close for comfort at one point, but oh, yeah. way seemed, too close for comfort. Clips still seem very, in, very in control the whole time. But we'll talk about what we liked from that one. <laughs> Uh, as well as what we didn't like. And then, it's what you say Wednesday. Every single Tuesday, poll goes out on Twitter. We want to know what you think oh, yeah. about a given feeling? question. Uh, and this one is all about if you, the fans out there, are having more fun or less fun watching the Clippers this year versus last year. Yeah. Can't wait to dig in to what y'all said. And then, in shavings... You know, PG can't do anything right. Guy tried to make a joke. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about it. We're, we're going to talk about it. Uh, all that and more coming up right about now. But first, got to let you know, today's episode is brought to you by Michelob Ultra. At only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories, it's only worth it if you enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned for the Ultra Player of the Week coming up later in the episode. You are locked on Clippers. Your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome to the fan, the fun recap. I love wins against the Blazers. Um, Clips in 130-116 in Staples. Patrick Beverly was back and started in this one. Yeah. Hey, Pat Bev, come back. You get a guard, Damian Lillard. That went pretty well. Um, Also saw the debut of Boogie Cousins, which we're going to talk about, but that went as well as anyone could have possibly imagined that first shift especially was <laughs> nearly flawless the man had a screen assist um <laughs> but what we liked the most in this game was this was paul george's night look we talked about it in the preview <laughs> it would be great for him i love anytime he's going up against dame and just mm-hmm. absolutely lays it on oh yeah did it 36 points 61 percent shooting 22 points in the first quarter <laughs> it was absurd it made no sense the clippers also scored 47 in the first quarter of this one. Um, yeah. So which is only like fourth highest. Fran- it's yeah. tied for fourth in the franchise, which was a little surprising. For sure. Do we worry about Paul George playing that full first? He played the full first quarter in that first shift due to some Kawhi foul trouble. I would say yes, if he didn't. There At no point in this game did I think, wow, PG's toe is really bothering him. Which yeah. is really what I was looking out for. Yeah. Um, but he, he A couple of times fresh. he did elevate off that foot. Yeah, uh, missed a sweet dunk attempt. A yeah, <laughs> it had, seemed to have no problem getting up. So Yeah, credit to Paul George. It was huge. Kawhi Leonard capped off the 2-1-3 night that we talked about on the preview episode. 29-12-7, just one turnover. Helped lock Lillard up on pretty much every level possible. Uh, Damian Lillard finished, what, like 2 of 13 in this game? Yeah, something like that. He had just 11 points. It's horrible. Uh, which was something else that we liked overall. I mean, holding Dame to 11 was big. Outside of that kind of first quarter, I thought the defense uh, really did its job in this one. Sometimes we were having some issues offensively, uh, you know, yeah. through turnovers and, you know, just some kind of cold stretches. Uh, but really kept up the intensity on that other side of the floor. I mean, if we were playing defense like this, and Kawhi and Paul George are putting both putting up twenty plus. I just see a. I, I, it feels very hard to see another team being able to hand it like to beat the Clippers over seven games. A hundred percent. They're they're rounding into form right now, which feels so good. Yes. One of the things uh, that helped out someone who's been in form pretty much all season was Reggie Jackson. <laughs> 
8 wow. of 12 shooting, 23 points, zero turnovers, borderline perfect Reggie game. You know what happened? He mm. thought he was starting. 40 yep. seconds before the game, they said, hey, you're actually coming off the bench. Switched it up on him. Pat Bev came back. And all things considered, looked as good as we could have hoped. Um, eight points, four boards, three assists. But the key, the shooting was a little off, but he's, he's getting back. The intensity was there. Yeah. There was a marked difference in that. Um, he he was had playing, a big steal early. Yep. Played some good defense. Helped set the tone, which is what we want the defense to do. And Zoo out there starting with Patrick Beverly. This was also, Shane Young tweeted this out. This was the first time all year this lineup got minutes. Wow. The first time that the Bev, Zoo, Kawhi, Mook, PG lineup got any minutes this year. Um, and it looked phenomenal. Boogie Cousins, debut, 7 4 and 2 in seven and a half minutes. I mean, for your third center, perfect. Defensively, not good. He was still on the in, perimeter. He was still yes. he was still a negative on the court uh, in terms of plus minus. But you know, first game back did a lot right. Fit in the fit looked better than I had anticipated. Yeah, I mean, with I, I, he's had what maybe one practice with the team. Yeah, it was great. He's going to be signed along <laughs> on the ten day contract, and if he's our third center, I see it's great. I'm excited for it. Yes. Um, I don't know what else do we like in this one. Uh, just one other like kind of little thing. We we did push the pace a little bit more in this one, mm -hmm. uh, especially early. We doubled up the Blazers on the fast break, and there's just kind of some interesting factors to the game, to the team looking a little bit faster. So one huge factor is just Paul George being incredibly aggressive. Yes, right. He was really getting downhill and getting some calls early. Yeah, uh, and that does just like give everything that makes defense think in a way that. You know, gives us a little bit more time to work while yeah. still being, you know, quick. Rondo also has basically every time he's been in now, been looking to push the pace, which yeah. I think is an interesting look. It's got to get tightened up a little. Um, For sure, still rusty. Had a, had, I think he had he had one turnover tonight where he just kind of threw the ball away, but yeah, he's getting back to it. But know? but I I like the look of it, and then you know, just a huge thing is just Pat Bev being back creating that that transition offense off yeah. of his defense um is huge so yeah really like that uh and anything else that we like from this one before we move into what we didn't like let's get into what we didn't like which let's talk about the guard rotation for a second so this is the biggest thing <laughs> and like this is this is, a, this is a conundrum yeah as you put in the notes it's <laughs> I, I mean i just don't know what we're gonna do with these minutes um Ty Lu said it'll change based on matchup but <sighs> Unclear what that means for Luke and Man. I mean, look, we did not see a whole lot of Man in this game. Oh. Um, and the weird part is, is I mean, in the regular season, sure, when when Reggie Jackson's shooting eight of twelve from the field and stuff like that, it's hard to like like whose minutes does he take, right? Like, well, that, that's the thing. I mean, I and and this is a good problem to have, right? But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it would be very hard to justify taking some of Reggie minutes for these Terrence Mann move minutes. The Rondo minutes is a thing where, I mean, look, he played, Rondo played 15 in this one, but if we're going to be seeing him in the playoffs, which I, we are, I, we just definitely are. Yeah. You got to kind of work these things out now. Like we yeah. alluded to he some of the Kings time. offensively in the other one, uh, but he was overall, I mean, I would say a net positive in this one. He would have had a lot more assists because he was in, I think, when we were really in that that cold spell. Yes. He would have had a lot more assists. The shots would have been falling at a normal rate. But this is just something to keep an eye on. Man, or Luke had pretty much no minutes in this one. Um, I think that's going to be his. Luke paid uh, three minutes, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be kind of his sitch. Um, Mook kind of had a rough game and didn't he didn't play very many minutes. So that, I hope he didn't tweak anything. Yeah, yeah. He finished with just five and four. He was two of seven from the floor, uh, one of six from a, from three. Yeah. So, I mean, as long as it's not an injury thing, it's no problem. It's also one of those things where I guess it he wasn't really necessary. I guess. I mean, if they held him out because of precaution, great. I don't think Ty Lue didn't mention anything about it in the post game, so that's good. I mean, um, he only had seven field goal attempts, you know. So, like overall, yeah. I I can't nitpick it too much for sure. Um, but yeah, one of those things. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the minutes as he kind of ramps up and yeah. and see what happens with that. A lot of fouls in this game. The Blazers shot thirty-seven oh, free throws. 
They shot like they shot what twenty one in the first half. Yeah, it was absurd. Um, we had we had thirty, so that was nice. Just an annoying thing to watch. Yeah, almost as annoying as the Valley Sports score bug. Um, I was it it was frustrating. I thought mainly just in that first quarter where I just thought we weren't really getting stops effectively. Yeah, and we put up forty seven points, but it was still kind of like we're not. <laughs> We're yeah. Not that far yeah, and I mean like and to not be getting stops and still getting all the fouls like I don't know, given that team I mean trips to the line, I just feel like could have been bad. But luckily, yeah. it wasn't bit of we a ride, quiet we one. Ready the ship. Yes. Bit of a quiet one for Zoo. Yeah. Ennis Cantor murked us on the boards. Yeah, we broke even with, in rebounding with the Blazers, which surprising we, if we I'm talked being about in the game preview like I thought with Nurk out, this would be kind of an opportunity for Zoo to uh to really I don't know, show out a little bit. Yeah, he only ended up fair. playing 24 minutes in this one. Part of that is, you know, probably working in DeMarcus yes. um, and then just regular rest. He had an early foul, but other than that, like nothing, I mean, nothing that Isn't crazy. Yeah, he only had two fouls overall, so nothing that would have limited his time there. I think it was more just kind of Ty Lue kind of, you know, throwing some darts as, Tinkering. To, what, yeah, like, as to what these lineups are going to look like with all these New pieces, both from signings and just guys finally being healthy. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting when we're fully healthy to see what happens with Ty. Overall, feeling great after this one. Yeah. Shout out to Paul George. Yeah, feeling Shout very good. Shout out to Kawhi Leonard. Shout out to everybody on the Clippers. Feeling very good. Great. Wire to wire victory. You love, love it. it. Always, always good. Coming up, we're talking the What You Say Wednesday poll that was sent out at Locked on Clips. But first, hey, as everybody knows... Joy creates success. It does. And this week's Michelob Ultra Player of the Week is, we got to give it to Paul George. Yes. Who else? Absolutely dominated the Blazers, bouncing back from some tough toe edema. And his shooting woes look like they've kind of righted, righted the ship a bit, as we said earlier. Looked like his old self. Hoping he grabs his momentum and runs with it. Going to be great to see what happens against um, the Suns. Or tentatively walks with it. Or Very good point. Or tentatively walks with it. Will his good play keep up? Who knows? What we do know is that Michelob Ultra has just 2.6 carbs and 95 cals. Hey, what a day. Wonder which Clippers player will be next week's Ultra Player of the Week. Michelob Ultra, are you happy because you win, or do you win because you're happy? This episode is brought to you by Philips One by Sonicare. One up your brushing with Philips One. This one is the ideal one for those who are still using an old school manual toothbrush. To all those people, it's time to take your brushing one level up. The solution is a simple one. It's the perfect timing one. It's the long-lasting battery-powered or USB rechargeable one. The comes in multiple colors to match you one. The one with a subscription that delivers new brush heads for just $5. Your teeth deserve this one. Philips One by Sonicare. One up your brushing. Learn more at philips.com one. That's P-H-I-L-I-P-S dot com slash O-N-E. Okay, so we're back with What You Say Wednesday, and we're talking fun. A classic Updike fun check. Look, we wanted to know, uh, once again, thank you to everybody who voted in this. If you didn't, we sent out a little poll on Twitter. Mm -hmm. That's every single Tuesday. We want to know what you you say. Uh, And this time we're wondering, are you having more fun, less fun, or same amount of fun (laughs) watching the Clippers this season as compared to last Charles, break it down for us. So, more uh, ran away with it. Ran away with this one. 71%. Less, 12%. Same, 17%. So, shout out to everyone who's having a really good time. Yeah. Where are you at on this? I'm at more. I'm at, I'm at fully more. And look, <laughs> regardless of result, I mm. was going to be a little bit more relaxed coming into this season. But, right. I think something about this season is that, I mean, look, where we're sitting right now, you know, what, like two and a half games out of the two seed. Yeah, playing the Suns tomorrow. Look, looking series. looking good at three. Um, yeah, it, it's a lot of fun to watch. I think the biggest thing for me has been most of the surprises this year that was have a been good theme. surprises. That was a common theme in we're, the comments. Whereas last year, everything that came out that was a surprise <laughs> was ass. always bad. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was always like, oh, he, he went to Magic City for wings, huh? That's a surprise. <laughs> oh, everyone hates each other. <laughs> cool. Um, Clipper Spencer echoed that sentiment. 
on Twitter. He said, this season has had some ups and downs, but there is just no comparison. It's way more fun. T-Man and Nick Batum alone have brought more fun than all of last year. Plus, being a little out of the media's gaze is so much better. The Atlanta and Miami games stand out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I, I agree with both of those things. And there's just, you know, there's just a little bit different of a vibe this year. Yes. Um, Which the team has noticed, as we've heard Lawrence Frank say the word vibes more than at any other point as being present. In the he sells vibes. <laughs> Papers. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyways, no, uh, I, like, it has a different feel, not just in that way, but like, the team just approaches each game um, with a greater sense of urgency, I feel like, than last year. Yeah. Like, last year, there were some really great wins. But, I mean, I don't know how many times we were like, ah, it's all right. They're going to figure it out. Ah, all right. They're going to figure it all out. We, all we heard and all we convinced ourselves was like, I'll care about this in X time frame. I'll care about this when this happens. And it was like, we should yeah. care about this. Now. feels like the team cares about it all now. Yeah. Um. MC Ren 80 on Twitter said there's definitely less cardiac clippers moments, which I will agree with. There's mm-hmm. a lot less times where you're like, I don't, this seems horrible. You know why? Because the clippers aren't clutch. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, tonight's <laughs> game was horrible for the clutch stats. Um, the less fun people, despite being the smallest percentage, um, were pretty vocal in the comments, which I guess I respect. Okay. What do we got? Uh, at uh, Banos Diaz said less fun. This team had the league by the balls last season, then decided not to show up in the postseason. The season doesn't look as promising due to injuries and the fact that teams like the Nuggets and Nets are a whole lot better than last year. So I, I think I blame this. I think last season wasn't fun for this person. Could be. Whereas this season is more fun. So I, I guess the thing is, I, I think that it's understandable to feel like the league isn't as wide open as maybe it was last year for sure because i think looking at the league if you know look it's just something that you can't control but like looking at the league this year it's like man last year was certainly a much easier easier you know run to the finals just theoretically yeah theoretically like who who you got to face and so many teams getting better Mm -hmm. um but I don't think that this team is any less dominant, really, than last year's team. This team's team. better than last year's team. I, I think so, too. And I think that, you know, we'll see how things progress. But, I mean, looking at that two spot right now, I mean, the Suns have a significantly more difficult schedule remaining than we do. Yep. We kind of weathered the storm so far to, you know, to remain top three. We had, you know, I mean, not the hardest schedule, but we had a, a an above average hard yeah. schedule throughout guys out yeah throughout this far in the season and we you know we've knock on wood but we've weathered the injuries and we've kind of weathered a lot of storm um so i i wouldn't say that this team is any less dominant than last year's through the regular season um and as far as injuries i mean i would say it's dead even for what it was last <laughs> year yeah a hundred percent um Arno Madothian, who again did another charity challenge for this. Hey, one. shout out Arno. Shout out Arno. The Clippers won by more than 12. So uh Path here in Los Angeles got a hundred bucks from Arno, which is great. If you want to match it, go ahead and match it. We just, these things just happen randomly when Arno tweets. We about throw us. down match on Locked On Clippers. We throw down match. We will I will always match. Um <laughs> put that on my tombstone. Always matched. <laughs> um he said less fun, and I'll tell you why. Last year, I had naive optimism that was unshakable, which didn't make the losses feel too heavy. This year, I feel like I'm looking at indicators and repercussions for each and every loss. Again, I'm blaming last year for all of these feelings. So I think that this is legitimate because I'm definitely guilty of the same thing too, right? Um, Like the way the season ended last year, it's kind of difficult to not overanalyze, you know, every single loss to be like, you know, so where is the thing this year that's going to be, you know, what lets us down ultimately? Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, once again, like having a, a little bit of a difficult run there on the schedule earlier, um, definitely kind of magnified some of those things. And the way we end is going to be magnified because we end on that four game. I know, but isn't it like the Rockets and the Thunder? And I think we end on the Thunder and there's a there's two games in there where you're kind of like, ooh. But yeah, um, at Alothian says less fun, but because of the effect of the pandemic and the NBA and not because of the team. Hey, that's a fair reason. 
Yeah, that's that's definitely fair. I think something that's being kind of put out of people's minds is this is still just like last season was weird. This season is just as weird in terms of COVID stuff, right? Like I found myself having to kind of remind myself like, oh, yeah, there's no training camp like this is still a very weird year of weird stuff with weird shit going on. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, you know, we were talking about it the other week, but like the Clippers had played like three or four more games than anyone else. And <laughs> yeah. like in the conference at one point, like, and, and, you know, knock on wood once again, but like, we've been fairly lucky with some of the health and safety protocol stuff. But you know, you look across the league and it's, I mean, yeah, it's a weird season. It's still not a normal season. Um, you know, I'm kind of hoping that we're getting to the light at the end of the tunnel on that, that hopefully I'm trying to get vaxxed up, man, hopefully we can get to a spot where some, some fans are going to be allowed because I, I the mean, the 18th, uh, they said LA County, it might be, uh, the 18th of, of May, uh, or April. of April, April, which is pretty crazy. You should push it back two days. <sighs> Feel me? Um, <laughs> Or maybe it is. Uh, maybe it is. Mail's getting my month screwed up. But I mean, there's going to be fans for the playoffs. Yes, like for sure, which will be a good time. Um, thank you to everyone who voted. Hope those who are having less fun, you know, hope it turns around for you. Uh, coming up, we're going to be talking PG trying to have some good fun. That was not fun for some people. But first, Will, talk to me about these bill bars. I keep hearing all the kids talk about. <clears throat> well, you're hearing them talk about them because it's the best tasting protein bar on the market. That checks out. The new, imp- the new and improved Built Bar is even more delicious than before. It comes in 18 amazing flavors, including nut and non-nut flavors for those with allergies out there. The six new flavors include caramel brownie, cookies and cream, cherry barcia, lemon almond cheesecake, carrot cake, and apple almond crisp. Wow. Built Bars are healthy, which is great because they're covered in 100% chocolate mm. and they're soft and easy to chew, but they're also great for the health-conscious person. You can lose or maintain weight while indulging in a delicious treat. The bars are low calorie, low sugar, high protein, high fiber, so they're great for the great for the keto diet. Oh yeah, and your insides. And a ton of fiber <laughs> is chock full of fiber. Uh, anyways, right now we have a very special offer for our listeners. Uh, if you go to builtbar.com and use the promo code locked fifteen, you'll get fifteen percent off your next order. And for a limited time. There's some free coolers with purchase while yep. supplies last. I'm about to buy a bill bar. So only lasts for a week or so. So you're definitely going to want to get on this. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. We also got to give a shout out to Bet Online. Ooh. Shout out to my gamblers out there, my fellow gamblers. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Football might be over. The NCAA also over. Hope some people bet on Baylor for that one. Uh, but you got the NHL, you got MLB, you got everything. Uh, BetOnline even covers awards, TV shows, and reality TV with real-time updated odds and props on almost anything you can imagine. BetOnline has you covered for all the news, scores, and odds. It's the best way to place your bets, and it's free to sign up. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. Okay, so we're back. With shavings. Oh, yes. Now that we've bet it all. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's all on the line. I bet my left foot on Baylor. <laughs> oh, speaking of feet, uh, there was, look, Paul George, for all the good that he does, sometimes puts his foot in his mouth. Sometimes it happens. The man shouldn't be on the internet. The man probably Maybe should. none of us should be. <laughs> well, look, I mean, <laughs> like, this is, Al Gore really doomed us when he invented, <laughs> invented the internet. Uh, Paul George was having some fun with his old friend Carl Anthony Towns on Instagram. Carl Anthony Towns posted a picture of him getting the first shot, the shot number one down. Paul George commented, I heard it'll shrink your feet <laughs> with a wide eyes emoji. Were you worried that, that Paul George was going to be an uh, anti vaxxer? So for a half second, <laughs> I was like, No, Paul. Then I remembered that they are very good friends. Yeah. And this seems like a joke joke in bold on our outline that paul george knew carl anthony towns would enjoy they're bagging on people who think it's a conspiracy oh 100 100 which is the thing but people online 100%. were mad about this look and like maybe it is in bad taste to joke with your friend about because we're not taking away from anything that carl anthony towns has gone through with covid yeah Paul George and him are close friends. This just seems... My thing is, like, you can think whatever, like, you you can feel however you feel about Paul George. That's whatever. That's whatever. 
he's still a very empathetic human being. <laughs> and I just really doubt that he would come at someone who's bag lost on, so much bag on his good to friend. COVID and like bag on a vaccine. So yeah, I don't know. It was just it was just another time when you realize Twitter really isn't all that important, and maybe we shouldn't even have it. <laughs> that would be my best takeaway from this. Um, but yeah, we hope uh, we hope it you know everything clears up. Hope everyone out there who's trying to get vaxxed can get vaxxed. Paul George, you know, he's a little rusty. He hasn't been getting up to mics. <sighs> to do these open this open mic scene. Paul George would bomb at every. <laughs> um, and oh, then he dropped thirty. I had a folly <laughs> today. Speaking of the vaccine. So there's, a, you'll see people like tweeting out stuff like, hey, I was just at this location, super dead, come through for a vaccine. Oh, yeah. And I was like, I'm going to go through for a vaccine, see if I can, you know, see if there's these extra ones that people don't want them. It was not empty. It was very busy. Oh. And I was like, well, this doesn't work. <laughs> well, I mean, they blew up the spot. They really did blow up the spot, which is good. I hope people get their vaccines. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I hope I'm trying to get vaxxed up soon. Yeah, it'd be good. I'm trying to get out there. Yeah, I'm trying to be. It's cough- time. I'm trying to be like Doctor Tarchi, coughing in people's mouths. You know, back like <laughs> getting it, coughed in. Yeah, getting coughed in. Back like it used to be. <laughs> uh, back when we were all coughing on each other. Still gonna be wearing a mask uh, when I'm on public transit, though. Just kind of like the vibe. Um, anything else in shadings? Anything else Clippers related we want to talk about? I'm feeling good after this win. I'm feeling good. Uh, man, I gotta be honest. The boogie thing surprised me. Very pleasantly surprised by it excited tepid expectations for how it's going to go moving forward mostly worried about how defensively i don't know that it's any better than patterson from one game the answer is no fair still getting back into shape we'll see what happens i'm curious to see what happens with rondo was gambling for some steals against the blazers oh man a couple of times that got me a little clenched that might be a rusty thing too yeah um he also did just uh, like apply some really solid pressure on the perimeter on a. He couple, broke some couple, stuff up. Yeah, he breaks he breaks up up uh, a lot of stuff away from the play, like yeah. away from where the ball is, which is nice to see. But hey, I get, everyone keeps saying it's a good problem for Ty Lue to have to have this many guards playing well. I'm not yeah. sure if it's a good problem. Yeah, it's a good problem. Yeah, I hope How it would it be up. a bad problem to have too many players that are good than you have minutes to play them? You just don't have enough minutes. <laughs> that's why <laughs> but also i think it actually does kind of help because we talked about how uh maybe terrence man was coming back down to earth a tiny bit with the shooting because he was shooting pretty crazy there for a while um yeah. but anyway we'll see what happens on thursday against the suns thursday's episode we're gonna have a preview of yet another big matchup that the clippers have this week against the suns they can take the tiebreaker away from them a thirsty thursday talking about what we want to see more of and of course whatever else happens between now and then in Clipperland. Well, where can these people tell their bosses that are listening to us when they were supposed to be working? Uh, tell your boss to check us out, too. Maybe you guys could Come listen through. together. Maybe yeah. you all could listen together uh, <laughs> on don't, iTunes. Don't hang out with your boss. <laughs> or the podcast app. We're also on Google Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Stitcher. We're on Deezer. You can oh, yeah. always tell your smart speaker to play Lockdown Clippers. He'll do it. It will. It's a smart speaker. It will. I have been positive, Chuck Mockler. And I am William the Opinion Updike. We appreciate you. <laughs>